What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for episode number two as we do floor number two of Invisible Ink. I actually, I like this game quite a bit. This is one of those games that I've been gushing about to everybody that I know the last couple days because I didn't even know it was a thing. The game used to be called Incognita and I had heard about it vaguely back in the day when it was called that, but they switched the name on it and then it just kind of fell off my radar for a while until I remembered, hey, wasn't there like a stealth game that I really wanted to play that I just couldn't find anymore and so I googled incognita it turns out the game had changed its name and so here we are we are going on to floor number two that would suck if your name was floor number two I mean there is a slightly derogatory connotation in there somewhere I mean have you seen a whole lot of nice floor number twos I mean it has number two in its name how awesome could it be nonetheless let's go ahead and accept the mission and we will go into the second floor it's too late to use your agents gear when they are dead Okay, and so every time you go to a new floor, they add a new modifier. The modifier for this floor is the Spec Ops team. They have a wide range of view and they will spot hidden units. Okay, well, that must make him popular at the Boys Club or something. I don't know. <laughs> never mind, never I try to keep my unit hidden, but every now and again I have a wardrobe malfunction. I should probably check these corners. I've made a mistake already. I've been playing for like 12 seconds and I've already screwed up. I need to check, so let's get back in here. And then maybe move him back to here, just to give him a little bit more depth lane. So in this mission, we've also got to find a key for the elevator, which means we need to shut down the mainframe server. Basically, a lot of bad things are about to happen. I'm going to move here. We'll peek this corner to make sure there's nobody hanging out right here. This right here is a store vendor, so if we wanted to buy things right now, we could. We do have a lot of cash, so it might be a worthwhile exchange. Let's have a look. Left Decker looking here. We open up the store. We got a salvage dart gun with two bits of ammo. Shalem's rifle, but that's only usable by Shalem, so unfortunately that's not really going to help us. Augmentation requisitions. We've got a holo circuit overloader. It'll knock out all enemies in a small area around the agent. That's kind of cool. And so it triggers whenever the agent becomes cloaked for any reason. Oh wow, so you could actually kind of bait people in. And then you could do like this little kaplow, like this kind of fart o electrical electrical fart o doom to wipe everybody out if you wanted to. And then a net down link. The agent will gain three ability points. This effect triggers after any mainframe object has had all of its ice broken on the mainframe. Okay. I probably shouldn't have spent that CPU though, because we may need it later on. It refills a single weapons clip. The dart gun is an interesting choice. I don't know how good that is because I've never had it, but. Double the amount of CPUs generated at a console. A buster chip breaks through three firewalls on a mainframe system. Essentially, this allows you to... It's like three extra CPUs. It just allows you to hack something. It's pretty sweet. A virtual scan so you can scan an unforeseen region. Unregistered ammunition. Okay. I'm not necessarily like planning on falling back to this location, but I'm going to buy the dart gun. And so Deckard has got himself a dart gun now. Which I guess we can use to knock people out. We'll try it in a little bit. Like I said, I'm not very good at this game. I'm not very good at it. I haven't memorized a whole lot of stuff, so it's going to be kind of a learning experience for me as well as you as we play. Let's end the turn. We've already wasted two turns just kind of booking around. I'm going to take a look outside this door. And it looks like this door is covered. So we've got a bunch of guards right here, but Shalem is captured and they're questioning him at the moment. So we could rescue Shalem if we were feeling really sort of aggressive. Let's keep that in mind. We'll close this door off. We know what's in this room now. Let's open this door up. Let's peek it. And so in here, we've already got cameras that are functioning. Let's knock out the camera. And we'll move Peddler into the room. On this side, we're going to do the same thing. Security is curious about this location. Oh, balls. Well, I don't think it's going to backfire on us at all. I could have... The th reason I said balls is because I could have booby-trapped this door so that when he opens it, it blows him up. We've got at least two turns to move around, so I'm not really that worried. But still, it would have been nice to be able to use his little shock trap to fool the enemy and take them out of commission for six turns. Like, it's a huge, huge amount of time you gain by doing that. If I step over to here, can I hack that? Good. Let's hack some CPUs. Over there, I'm a little bit nervous about stepping over here. I don't know if maybe I could peek this and get a better feel for what's over there, but I don't want to leave an agent standing up against this wall if there's an open door right there, so maybe I'll sneak around this way. There's a second camera that's going to turn on on the next turn, so let me sneak around here. 
We'll end the turn. So that alarm is now activated. We'll turn. I'm sorry, that camera has now activated. We'll turn that off. This guard is hanging out in that room. And I do think it's time to get mobile. So let's move this way. There's no red space, so I don't think anybody's going to catch us if we go out and over here. And I guess I will just leave him standing here. I mean, the worst thing that could happen, I don't see any patrol trails or anything, so we should be alright. He's still investigating, and on the next turn, he's going to return back to his initial post, which is guarding Shalem. Oh, there's a guard. Oh, no, it's a mysterious agent, I think. Oh, it does say that we're going to get spotted if we go up in here. Oh, it's because there's a camera. Okay. And so they've now noticed that their cameras are going offline. So what they've done is they've introduced a security protocol on ICE. And so it's a door sentinel. And that means that opening a door will raise the alarm level by one point while this program is in effect. Now we can use two, or we can use three CPUs to get rid of it if we really, really wanted to. But for right now, we're not going to have to open any doors for another turn or so. So I'd rather leave it in play and just kind of see where the cards fall. We step into this room. We have the mysterious agent. I think he offers you an item for a certain amount of money. Yeah, we don't have any doors to open, so I'm thinking that that's not even really something that we should be all that worried about. This entire area appears to be really open air. He's gonna move back. We can hear you see those little sound waves. That means we can hear him. Oh, he's actually coming to investigate in here for some reason. That is problematic. I don't know if maybe he heard me. Is there a door right here, possibly? I mean, I want to put a door right here and then shock him if I can. But it's... Well, I still have... So we've got... Dr. Peddler's got six movements, so one, two, and then he can go one, two, three, four, and almost get away, but he can't quite get away if I do this. Yikes. Well. The better plan might be something like this. If I put him in run mode, that gives him a plus four. We can close the door, we can shock trap the door, and so I was concerned that there wasn't a door right there. We'll shock trap the door, and that should buy us a little bit of time, but that does mean that it pretty much is a foregone conclusion that, like, who wouldn't notice that? Look at that enormous thing on the door, it's like a wall wart. You know what a wall wart is back in the day, so for my younger viewers, a wall wart back in the day was like one of those enormous adapters that would plug onto your wall for like a Sega Genesis. It was basically an adapter the size of your fist that would convert the currency so it didn't blow up your Sega Genesis. Nonetheless, let me... I'm gonna step back into a safe zone here. Close the door. He's gonna get knocked out anyways when he touches this, so it'll work out. And here we go. And down he goes. So there's the shock trap right there. You've seen it in motion. It worked out pretty great for us, actually. Not bad. Let's, let's move him up to this position. And he opened the door for us. So we're not going to have to concern ourselves with the alarm going up as a result of us opening the door. And so that went according to plan. Everything is moving according to spec right now. I'm going to ask the mysterious agent what he's got for me in just a minute, but not right now. We're going to wait a little bit. We've got him down for six turns, but I want to keep his cooldown from going down for as long as possible. Let's talk to Shalem. Is there another room over there? And so Shalem says, make it worth my while to join your team. My going rate is 200 credits up front, and then 500 credits per floor after that. That's an expensive cost. That's a very, very high cost. And so you've actually got to justify his existence from here on out by hacking more safes. And so you're kind of sign you're signing a contract, basically, in this case, where you're basically saying that for the remainder of the game, I need to take things slow and loot way more nodes than I normally would. If we go with a smaller team, we don't necessarily have to loot as much because our overhead is lower. However, Shalem is pretty good. He comes with a gun, and so he might be worth the effort. Let's go for it. Let's hire Shalem. 
Says, I guess that means break time is over. Oh, good, he came with his gun. I was worried that we wouldn't get his gun by default. And so with 11 CPUs, we'll disable the door sentinel. We'll crack this safe because we got to make up for the fact that we just spent money. Shalem will get in there. And he got a buster chip. Not bad. I mean, I would have taken money. I would have preferred money, but a buster chip works. Let's put him up on this corner. And he's going to peek this. Looks like we've got a camera database and another loot safe. We want to be careful with our CPUs here because eventually we are going to have to hack a mainframe that allows us to get through the final door. But at this point, I don't know if we can move through each other. We cannot. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy and see what he's got for us. I have a device that may be of use to you for a price. 500 credits, no thank you. Let me close this door right here so that when I open this door, if there's somebody standing there, it doesn't give his position away. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. You see how those red squares right there went out? That is exactly what I'm talking about. So let's close that door off because it makes me nervous leaving it open. On the next turn, we'll peek that and have a look. Okay, so the mainframe has had its firewalls increased. However, we do have a buster chip, which is not so bad. We've hacked the camera mainframe, which is going to allow us to know where all the cameras are at, but it's given us a system lockout daemon which locks all consoles, which means we can't get any more CPUs. So bad things are happening. Still, we need to get through that security door right there. And I have no way to hack it. Let's open this back up. I clicked peek on accident. That was a waste of a movement point. Oh well. We'll peek it one more time. We're getting five out of that console, and it cost us five to access the room. So this gives me a little bit... Oh, there's two right there, so we'll get ten out for a cost of five. I'm okay with that. Let's end the turn. That carries over, so we'll disable that. He'll hack that right there, so we got five more CPUs for our own use. After breaking into the console, Decker notices a single line of blinking text... Who are you? You're not supposed to be here. I'm calling security. Tracker increases by one. Or we can bribe him. I'm gonna go with the bribe. So it says, don't worry, I didn't see anything. The message disappears quickly. Your tracker is decreased by three. Oh, we're back in level one. That was actually a really cost-effective solution for us. I'll take it. On the next turn, we'll get this CPU over here. For now, what we need is for Shalem. Oh, there's a guard over there. Okay, so that explains a number of things. However, we can in-cap this guy. I thought that there was a camera over here. Let's in-cap him using our melee guy. We'll loot him. Hopefully, we'll get the security card because... Sometimes the random level generator... I don't want to say anything shitty right now, but it's come to my attention that occasionally the random level generator in this game makes... I have never seen one that's impossible, but I've seen one that's very close to impossible. So I've seen one, for example, where you have to get to the exit, but the room has a guard here, has a guard here, has a guard here, it has like a guard here. And basically there's no way you're getting into the room without somebody dying, or multiple people dying almost. So I will mention that. We should be able to lock him down before he wakes up with Decker. We'll hijack those five. So there it is. We've got ourselves up to 11 CPUs, and those are going to continue to accumulate as we play. On this side, we want Peddler to knock this guy out, so he's now down. We're going to steal, so we get 100 credits out from right there, and then we'll loot the body for the pass card. That's good, because it opens this door right here, which may be our only way out of the level. With Shalem now freed up, we've got a turret over here... I don't know where the mainframe server is at, and so I'm going to save... Is that the mainframe server? Okay, so how do I disable this? Do I just go in and do it? I've never actually made it this far. I'm bad at this game, as you might be able to tell. I don't very typically make it very far. Okay, so we've only just now gone back to level 2. We're going to have Decker sit on this guy for a minute. And so that's going to keep him unconscious. Shalem's going to go in and disable the mainframe, hopefully. 
The core is shut down. You must now escape the floor. Alright, so we shut down the floor. Is this the elevator over here? This is more than likely the elevator, if I know this game. Because they- yeah, you'll start to notice kind of motifs. They always put turrets next to the elevator, stuff like that. But I want to get 100% completion here. And so I'm gonna have Shalem do a little bit of scouting while we wait. We've got enough guards knocked out at the moment. We've got a lot of supplementary abilities right now, too, to where I think we'll be able to do alright. We've got quite a bit of time until we hit level 3. And so I think this is one of those cases where we do have the ability- Oh, they're gonna have to trade spaces. Put him right there. Shalem will knock this guy down. Let's unlock the door. Open it up and let's have a little peeky peeky sneaky sneaky. We found a safe. We found a couple of safes, actually. I don't know if that's active right now. It makes me nervous to think. So let's disable it just in case. That's now down, so we've eliminated that. This right here, I don't know if there's a motion detector in here somewhere, but you see this red ring? I'm not sure what's generating that, and we need to figure that out too. With my remaining CPUs, we'll disable this guy right here, since we've already done our job. Let's get him in, we'll loot the safe. 500 credits, even better. That allows us to pay Shalem for an entire floor, so that I couldn't have asked for a better payout. I don't want to let either of these guys up until we have the layout of the entire floor scouted with Dr. Peddler. Although it is important to note that on the next turn, a bunch of guys are going to spawn right here. So, I'm sorry, on the next security level. We have five CPUs right there, but I'm more interested in figuring out what's going on. Oh no. So I went for an overwatch, but that took up all my- it was a guard. There's not a whole lot I can do right here. All I can do is hope that that overwatch works. Ooh, I've made a mistake. This is how the game gets you. Every time you rush, every time you feel like you need to rush, it's that's how it gets you. We don't have any med gel left either. And I don't have a homing device. Damn, I was hoping that... I wonder if I can... There we go. If I can bait him away, it'll go a little bit better. Let's try. If it works, it works. If it didn't, it didn't. Okay, so now he's seen the knocked out guard. And what I need now is we're going to use run. What I need is for him to turn around. Decker will use the takedown. And we need to hurry. This has actually gone kind of poorly. I'm going to take Shalem off this guy because we've got an extra turn. We're going to loot the safe. And we're going to move as far as we can given what we have. He's going to have to sprint, but he's got a lot of movement, so it'll be okay. He's got one extra turn. Okay, and so the goal right now... Oh yeah, steal from him while we're here. Why not? Might as well get the extra 100 credits. So what we want to do now is we're going to sprint him... Oh, tell me there's room for everybody on the elevator. Okay, there's room for everybody. So we'll put him right here. Let's move so Shalem can get here on the next turn when everybody wakes up. We may actually, in fact, lose Shalem still. We've done the best that we can here. 
These guys are all now going to wake up and the building is on high alert. The security teams are flooding into the corridor. Sometimes these guys get overwatch. I'm not really sure how it works, but sometimes they do. Well, we go for it. Okay, he didn't get Overwatch. I think there's a specific, like, they get something if they get an Overwatch. Right now, they're only on a point of interest. Like, this little exclamation point means they're investigating things. They're gonna go look and see that the safe's empty. Basically, they're discovering all the shenanigans we've been up to. But, doesn't matter because Floor 3, here we come. And so, there it is, everybody. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here for the second floor of our Invisible Ink playthrough. We picked up a new individual, Shalem. We're losing a little bit of cash, but that's okay. We haven't upgraded anybody. Hopefully on the next floor we can make it up and find some extra safes. To I'd like to get us up to like 2,000 credits. I'd like to upgrade Dr. Peddler's movement or his melee so that he can knock people out for longer. Decker tends to be our guy that I have running around a lot, so at the moment, with the way that we're built, as a little bit of a recap, we've got Dr. Peddler, very good with melee, not very fast. We've got Decker, very, very fast, tons of movement points, but can't really kill anybody or do anything useful aside from his dart gun right now. Basically, his most useful ability is the fact that he's just on the lam all the time. And then we have Shalem, who is our sniper. And so we've got a little bit of a balanced team right now. We've got double ranged, and we've got melee, and we've got a little bit of movement. And I, I think this run, I don't know. I don't actually know what challenges are ahead of us. I am really terrible at this game, so I don't think I've ever actually seen anything past floor two. That's how bad I am. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for Invisible Ink by Clay Entertainment. If you want to get the game, check the link down below. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode, and take care out there, everybody. I do.